Good day, the English News Bulletin. I'm Bhavana Casey. In the beginning, we have the headlines. State Affairs Committee endorses the bill on the Constitutional Council. Prime Minister's consent mandatory for approving the decisions. And as 15 people die in due to suspected heat stroke in India's eastern states of oh, Bihar and Odisha, heat wave expected to continue until Saturday. Donald Trump found guilty on all counts at Huss money trial, becomes the first U.S. president to be convicted of the crime. And FIFA warned players to go on strike if they continue to be overworked. The FA urges to alter the congested football calendar. Welcome back to our Vidanti English News Bulletin. Now we have the news in details. Decisions in the Constitutional Council will now require the consent of its chairman following the endorsement of a new bill. The Prime Minister holds the position of the committee chair. The State Affairs Committee in its meeting on Thursday endorsed the bill on the Constitutional Council. The bill stipulates that if a decision cannot be reached by consensus in the Constitutional Council, the chairman who is the Prime Minister and at least 50% of the current members will decide by majority of the vote. The bill had previously stalled due to lack of consensus among the major parties. The Constitutional Council, which recommends the Chief Justice and the officials of the Constitutional Commission, and includes the Prime Minister as the Chairman and members, such as the Speaker, the Chairman of the National Assembly, the Chief Justice, the Deputy Speaker, and the Leader of the main opposition party. The new provision considers a quorum to be reached if the chairman and at least 50% of its members are present. The bill now amended by State Affairs and Good Governance Committee will be presented in the upcoming Parliament's meeting. The House of Representatives will convene at 11 a.m. on June the 2nd. The bill must also be accepted by the National Assembly and certified by the President to become a law. The Janamath Party, backed by five other parties, is, sit, is set to stake its claim on the post of Chief Minister in Madhya province on Friday. Earlier, the five political parties agreed to appoint the Chief Minister from the Janamath Party, led by C.K. Rao. According to the agreement reached on Thursday evening, uh, while Chief Minister Saroj Kumar Yadav of the Janata Samajwadi Party Nepal, led by Upendra Yadav, is preparing to take a vote of confidence by June the 10th, the five uh, other parties is agreed to elect a Janamath Party candidate as a chief minister. However, only the CPNU ML, Mao Center and Janamath Party have signed the agreement. The Unified Socialist and Lokotantrik Samazbadi have not yet a shine. In the 107-member provincial assembly, 54 seats are required to form a new government. Currently, there are 24 lawmakers from the UML, excluding the speaker, 13 from the Janamath Party, 9 from the CPN Mao Center, 8 from the Lokotantrik Samazbadi, and 7 from the and unified socialist. The Nepali Congress holds 22 seats, while Janata Samajwadi Party has 18 seats in the provincial assembly of the Madhya province. With this update, I time to go for a short break, but it's still to come. We have. Welcome back. Now, two more updates. Rise in temperature and heat wave has made public life so difficult across the country. Various districts from lowland Tarai region, Nepalgans, Butol and Dhangadi have recorded temperature above 40 degrees Celsius. People in general are facing difficulty to go outside of their homes. In view of the safety of school children, many school administrations in Tarai have already announced school closure for some days. The division also said less rainfall during pre-monsoon season has been the major factor to rise in temperature. The division say the trend of rising temperature will continue until 13th of June. With the advent of monsoon, a slight change is expected in the weather pattern. Health experts have urged one and all to be cautious and consume a lot of fluids, increase intake of water, cover body with light fabric and cover the head with scarf while outdoors. 
Now to the international updates, at least 15 people have died of suspected heat stroke in India's eastern states of Bihar and Odisha on Thursday. Authorities said with the reason crippled in a heat wave expected to continue until Saturday. India has been experiencing a blistering hot summer and a part of capital Delhi recorded the country's highest ever temperature at 52.9 degrees Celsius this week, though that may be revised with the weather departments checking the censures of the weather station that registered the reading. The deaths of 10 people were reported in the government hospital in Odisha on Thursday. Authorities said well, five deaths were reported in Bihar's Aurangabad city due to sunstroke. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has been convicted on all 34 counts of falsifying the historic business records in his historic criminal trial record in New York. It is the first time a former or serving U.S. President has been convicted over crime in the United States. Trump now will be sentenced on 11 July. The ex-president could face prison, but legal experts say a fine is more is the more likely outcome. Now time to go for a short break, but it's still to come we have. Welcome back now to more updates. South Africa's ruling party, the African National Congress, is on course to lose its majority in the parliament for the first time since it came to power 30 years ago. Partial results from Thursday's parliamentary elections suggest. With results from around the 43% voting districts counted so far, the ANC is leading with 43%, followed by the Democratic Alliance DA with 24%. Both the radical economic freedom fighters and the NK party of former President Jacob Juma are on the round are on around 10 percent. Final results are expected over the weekend. The U.S. and Chinese defense chiefs held rare direct talks in Singapore on Friday, offering hopes for more military dialogue that could prevent disputes and other flashpoint issues from the spinning out of control. The meeting between the United States' Lloyd Austin and China's Dong Jun on the sidelines of the Sangrila dialogue is the first face-to-face -face talks between the two countries' defense chiefs in 18 months. Defense chiefs and officials from around the world are attending the annual forum that has in recent years become a barometer of U.S.-China relations. Two more updates, but before that, let's have the highlights first. Just after sunrise on the Afghan day of rest, two gold finches pop their chest and belt out of a song, surrounded by men straining to hear where chirps stronger in an age-old pastime. Every Friday, hundreds gather on a basketball court in West Kabul to pitch their pet birds against each other in a test of tweets and trills. Now to sports. FIFA 
football's old governing body, FIFA, has been warned of players are willing to go on a strike if they continue to be overworked. Professional Footballers Association Chief Executive Maheta Molango believes players are now at wrecking point. The PFA has been calling for action to alter the congested football calendar, especially with this expanded 32-team club World Cup proposed for next summer. The PFA has threatened legal action and has been exploring options to do that over the growing number of games in the football calendar. With this update, we come to the end of this English News Bulletin. But before we say goodbye, let's have a quick reminder of the major stories. State Affairs Committee endorses new bill on the Constitutional Council. Prime Minister's consent made a mandatory for approving the decisions. At least 15 people die of suspected heat stroke in India's eastern states of Bihar and Odisha. Heat wave expected to continue till Saturday. Donald Trump found guilty on all counts at Hus money trial becomes the first U.S. president to be convicted of a crime. And FIFA warned players to go on a strike if they continue to be overworked. The FA urges to alter the congested football calendar. That's all we have in this edition of English News Bulletin. We shall see you again with next round of English Bulletin at 6 in the evening. Till then, have a great time ahead and do stay tuned with us. Namaste.